Thank you so much, Wendy. What we're going to be talking about today uh, involves uh, the project management organization. Uh, those of us who've been at that level and uh, who aspire to that level uh, have certain challenges that we're going to have to meet. Uh, I've met some of those challenges, and what I'd like to share with you today uh, are some of those challenges and how I approach those challenges and how some of my colleagues approach those challenges. On our first page there, uh, I thought this quote was appropriate by Aristotle. Uh, he says that uh, we have a clear and practical ideal, uh, and we have a goal or an objective, and then we have the necessary means to achieve whatever those ends are, uh, be they wisdom, money, materials, and then we adjust all of our means to that end. That's more or less what we do uh, when we're beginning any type of organization or any type of endeavor of uh, this magnitude. On our next slide, sorry about that, that was the wrong direction. On our next slide, uh, what we're saying here, or, uh, the presentation objectives here, what we're going to be doing, we're going to talk about exactly what a PMO is. And we're going to talk about uh, the development steps of setting up a PMO. There are four phases to that. Uh, then we're going to talk about some PMO models that are currently used out there in the world. I'm an advocate of using things that have been tested, using things that work in the real world. Uh, I believe theory is fine, uh, but uh, as I've said before, come Monday morning, uh, we have schedules to meet, and we have clients to, to please, and we have things that we have to accomplish. So we want to use models that work, and that's what we're going to be presenting today. We're going to be talking about how those models differ, uh, their strengths and weaknesses, and we're going to be talking about development, organization, and management strategies used by those particular models. Uh, given your particular environment, your particular culture that you're dealing with with a client, uh, it's important to determine what particular management strategies that you want to use when developing your PMO. And then we're going to talk about some best practices for determining an appropriate PMO development approach. PMO definition and purpose, as we probably all know, uh, PMO is a group or a department within a business, and, and, and what we do in our PMO is we coordinate project management efforts. Uh, we define the tools, we define the, the best practices and the guidelines for a particular organization, and our purpose under the PMO is to consolidate that effort and make ourselves the de facto go-to place uh, for projects within a particular organization. Uh, we strive to standardize those particular practices and we strive to educate uh, our clients on the use of those uh, particular practices, tools, and guidelines, and also internally, the people who work for us. So we're a service organization. Okay, uh, we provide a service, and of course, being a service organization, our mandate uh, is to please our clients. Let's talk about our approach, just, just how do we want to approach creating a PMO organization. Let's get back to basics. We want to say that setting up a PMO is just another project. We set up a PMO following the types of guidelines that we use as project management professionals when we're setting up a project. We want to establish it. We want to use the same method that we're using in setting up other projects. We want to analyze our current situation. We want to tailor made or tailor make uh, a solution uh, for that particular project. And we proceed to implement after that point. That second point there, uh, we want to deduce a sale made uh, concept. One thing I want to emphasize, there is no cookie cutter prototype for a PMO. 
your PMO is probably going to be a hodgepodge of the different types of primary PMOs that I'm going to present to you, okay? You're going to have to tailor make that PMO to fit your organization, depending on what your stakeholders want, depending on being able to provide a level of appropriate service to that organization, and you want to be able to determine where your particular organization lies and so far as its maturity is concerned in professional project management. Okay, all of those things are going to play into uh, your solution uh, for a uh, PMO. Again, with our approach, as I said, we need to customize it. Uh, your PMO is going to be a, a customization, uh, current overall conditions, as I said, organization's maturity. Uh, your main challenge is going to be to decide, uh, setting it up to suit your particular organization. You may have set up, if you're a veteran and you've been out here for a while, you may have set up PMOs elsewhere. And then you leave that organization, you go to another organization in that particular capacity. You want to set up another PMO. That PMO, although you set it up previously, other PMOs and other organizations, each PMO that you set up is going to have to be uniquely designed. Don't go into an organization and expect to come in with the same type of PMO that you designed elsewhere. Okay, you're going to have to tweak things a bit. You're going to have to get into an analysis of where they are right now before you can even present a design model to them. A generic framework uh, of the PMOs that I'm going to describe to you, uh, that's fine, that, 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 but that's the beginning, okay? It's just used for guidance. As we said, there's no one PMO type and no one right approach. Our PMO development steps, you know, uh, we said there are four phases of setting up a PMO. And those phases are analyzing that current state, getting our PMO concept together and solidifying that, actually setting up that PMO and turning over that PMO operation to uh, our internal service providers or our internal employees. Over the top there, you see parallel change management and support uh, from top management. That transcends the entire process of setting up a PMO. While you're going through these four current states, four states that you're going to be used in setting up your PMO, during that time, all the way through. Hi there, I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Malutis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of The Great IT Professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.